Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine What's a light your story? on incredible What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I'm your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we are joined by Lazar Bulatovich, and the, uh, the public speaking and presentation skills coach of Global Speak. Welcome, Lazar. Hello, thanks for having me here. I'm very excited to have you today and to learn more about you and dive into your journey. So let's, let's do that. Let's tell us a little bit more about yourself and your unique journey. Oh, well, <laughs> basically very interesting question. And to be honest, sometimes I don't know where to start when people ask me so, but well, you know, when I graduated sociology, it was, oh, who knows, like in 2016, yeah, I was looking for a job, just like any, you know, freshly graduate. And I could imagine that HR people will be kind of reserved due to my disability, since I'm totally blind since birth. But to be honest, I never expected such a huge amount of stereotypes and prejudice. And I can be honest with you, I had many unsuccessful job interviews. And it's not about that I did not get any of those opportunities. It's about the rejections and the way the rejections are actually put. So for example, I had many cases where people could could say something like, well, we think that you are very good for this position, but we can't adjust you to the workplace, or this position is not available for you. Sometimes I could even get the notice that they need someone who can't see well. But in most cases, I would receive those automated um, email rejection messages. Oh. Oh yeah, thank you for your interest, but I will think that you're not the right fit for us. And finally, I got a job at the Serbia Postal Office. By the way, I'm from Serbia. This is the um, small country in the Eastern Europe. And, you know, this job was totally kind of tedious boring. I just couldn't see myself working there for like, you know, 30 years and go do nothing. So I started, I started freelancing. And one client actually asked me to write a speech and help him deliver it. So basically to coach him how to do that properly. And although I was kind of scared, um, I accepted that challenge. And that was my aha moment when I realized that I want to become a public speaking coach because I think I did so well and he was amazed with my services. So I decided to quit my boring job and start something new. The problem was <laughs> I'm blind. And you know, coaches that who work with public speaking are expected to help people with their nonverbal communication skills. So I decided to find an assistant for nonverbal communication. And what's so special about being a public speaking coach and being blind at the same time? Well, you know, being blind allows me to hear insecurity and weaknesses about my client's voice and help them fix them easily. So, yeah, that's my advantage. It's, and a, and it's, a, it's a very cool advantage and exactly. a, a unique approach to public speaking because so much of the emphasis is too often on the visuals and the, the, the parts that, that kind of fall through the cracks or get tucked under the table 
you can come in and really, really highlight and emphasize what what's what's going on, kind of at the, exactly. the, the many many layers of, of public speaking. Yes, it's a it's a such huge area. Yeah, it is. So tell tell me more, kind of what what does your day to day look like, and what type of clients do you have? And uh, I'd love to know more. Great. So huh, the trick is that my day are not the same. And uh, this is what I'm happy for. So none of my days is the same. And I really enjoy that. But I can say that um, my crucial activities are working with the clients, doing the outreach, creating posts. Also, I recently um, started getting involved into the ex accessibility community. So we usually um, have events where I give speeches about accessibility. Also, I'm a member of Toastmasters. This is the uh, biggest organization for public speakers or people who want to get better at public speaking. So I also prepare speeches for, for meetings with, with them. Most of my clients are entrepreneurs, founders, although I have some executives as well, but mostly entrepreneurs who want to double or increase their revenue with public speaking. And this is what I do. So I help entrepreneurs add five to 10 K per month with the power of public speaking. And now people usually ask, so how? Well, basically, Public speaking is a very powerful thing and huge. So they can use public speaking in many ways. For example, to show on more podcasts, to present their brand and video, even to earn by speaking at big events, to build their network. So there are countless um, chances that people can use to increase revenue just with the magic of public speaking. And this is why I love it so much. Now there's there's a, a lot of truth to be able to be able to to share with the world what your skills and talents are and to be able whatever you whatever you're doing either as an entrepreneur, as a as a C level position person or wherever you're at in your business, being able to tell your story and to be able to connect with others so that it can resonate with them and they can and it can be memorable um, absolutely has incredible power. Exactly. And, um, and figuring out the how to customize it for each individual, it, it is a customized because each of our voices are different, each of our stories are different. So it's I I, I and I enjoy hearing that that you are kind of helping your clients figure out how to do it within their own unique kind of voices and stories, which is- Yeah, that's awesome. true. I mean, you know, every client has a different story and every client has different needs. However, mutual trait to them is that all of them want to use public speaking. And this is why I love it so much as I, as I said. So yeah, different circumstances, but public speaking is the way they use to get it, to, to get there. Do you, do you tie in disability uh, into any of your public speaking so that they connect with a larger audience that's beyond their, maybe their normal, or I don't like the word normal, their, their usual customer base to be able to expand into disability markets? Uh, could you please clarify the question? In some of your trainings, do you ever work with your clients to expand their clientele uh, and customer base into communities of people with disabilities? Oh, so basically, um, this is not the part of my training by default. However, in case um, someone asked me if I'm happy to help reach wider audience um, covering people with, disabil with disabilities, yes, I, I do that happily. Uh, for example, I am very close to the HR community here in Serbia, 
and uh, they are interested in employing more people with disabilities. So I actually helped a few companies um, reach to, to those people and some of them even get hired through, through, my, through my help. So yeah. I love that. And, and when, it, when it comes to public speaking, like what do you love most about teaching it and, and being a part of that, that kind of that process, that conversation? Okay. So you can't imagine how happy I am when I, for example, compare recordings of clients from their first session and then when they finally can play the training with me. So, for, so people who basically had a lot of filler words, who used to say so many ums and ahs, who were afraid of public speaking, who, could not, who couldn't imagine themselves speaking in public, whether on video or stage or whatever. And after only four weeks of working with me, they become so confident. And then when I see that change, this is something that makes me so happy. And this is something that fills my heart to the top. So I feel amazed at the progress they, they make. And what also... You go, Lazar. And also, I'm very happy when they are satisfied they say, yes, Lazar, you helped me achieve this or that. For example, <laughs> I, I recently had a client who said, Lazar, you helped me increase my revenue by 50%. Let's meet in person. I want to give you a hug. So those moments are moments that I live for. And so with, with clients like that, what are some of the big tips and tricks that you give to, to help bring them to the next level? Every client is, is a story, is, is a different story because every client has a different needs. However, there are a few tips that I can get to everyone who wants to get better at public speaking. So first things first, always research your audience before you give a speech or presentation or before you speak on video. That's very important. You need to know who is your audience. And that's the most um, important way to simply adjust your presentation or speech. Then be ready for questions. Always be open to answer each of them. And in, and in case you don't know the answer, say that. Tell that, I don't know that, however, I'm open to, you know, new, to telling, to, to, to giving, to getting back to you. So take the email address and get back to that person. Also, you can do some quick exercises that will help you uh, slow down your heart rate and take control over your breath. That's very important. So control your breath while speaking. And yes, make pauses. Silence is golden. And if you make pauses, people will listen to you more. So those oh. are, yeah, so those are some general tips. But again, every person is a story for itself. And that's why it, 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 it just cannot be applied to, you know. There, there's so many layers of psychology when it comes to uh, public speaking, and being able to come be being persuasive, diving into uh, just even like the Greek philosophers on the ethos, pathos, and logos. Of, oh yeah, of really of, of persuasion. Um, no, I, I I love public speaking. Um, I, I I studied a lot in school as well, and it's it's people think it's just a matter of just getting up to a podium and <laughs> saying what's ever on your mind. There's there's so many more layers to it than that. Yeah, it's much more complex. And uh, one, one more thing. So always record yourself speaking. This is what I, I also advise to, to, to my clients. So always record yourself. That will allow you 
to know what are your mistakes and uh, you will be able to see what are areas that still require working on and that also allows you to track your progress and become better. That's awesome. And so when it comes to people learning more about you, um, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to put a link in the, the, the YouTube video down below um, of your calendar so people can sign up uh, for a free, I think, 60 minute session with yeah. you. But if people go to Global Speak, um, tell me, tell me more. So it's globalspeak.net, but tell me more of some of the offerings and services that you provide to your clients. Sure. So I enjoy working individually and most of my trainings are basically tailor made to each client because there is no the same person in, in this planet. So I rather than um, having something on the plate, I usually enjoy talking to people who are interested in me in, in working with me. And then together we identify biggest challenges related to public speaking, intentions, hopes, dreams, fears. Why not? And then I create the tailor-made training solution just for that person. However, um, shortly I consider starting group training sessions in small groups and also B2B training programs that will be offered to teams and companies. That's awesome. And um, I, I, I always like to ask people I speak to kind of what is, what is an achievement you're most proud of uh, over, your, over your life? By far, the fact that I mastered the way of navigating around using the white cane, the white stick. So being independent is something which I am very proud of. I learned how to navigate around on my own. I had very, very good uh, instructor in, instructors for orientation and mobility. So I'm equipped with the skills and th that allow me to travel alone, to travel on my own, myself. So I can definitely get out whenever I want. I'm very independent. Um, I know how to move around. To, uh, uh, to to go to the to the any trip I want. So recently I visited uh, Sarajevo. This is the city in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I enjoyed so much, and I did it simply on my own. I can say that I'm passionate traveler. So I visited many countries in Europe. Everything help helps to 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 my white cane. So this Whether it's in your own life. personal life or in your travels, what, what does accessibility mean to you? To me, well, it means that I can do whatever I want without any special obstacles. Um, speaking about accessibility and web accessibility, it means that the website, that everything is doable on the website with my screen reader. So without any other assistive technology except the screen reader, which I'm using daily. And concerning uh, other things, for example, independent mobility, it means that there are a lot of, um, you know, specially designed pathways, guidelines for the blind with like signal traffic lights with the sounds so I can know where and when I will be able to cross the street that allows me to feel safe. And this is for me accessibility. So feeling sa safe and being able to do things that I want to do, being independent, that's the accessibility for me. Well, Lazar, thank you so much for sharing your journey, your skills, your talents, your the way that you're waking up every morning. And I'm glad that you quit your other job uh, and was able to pursue this career path. Um, and it's just going to keep keep getting better and better and helping more and more clients around the world. So I tip my hat Thank to you. you. 
And um, and just thank you so much for being on on the show today. Thank you. It's a, it was my pleasure. And for our audience, thank you so much for staying to the end on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. Um, until next time, take care, everyone. Thank you.